يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتٍ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد ما دي brothers and sisters in Islam today is our weekly class حلية طالب العلم the etiquette of the seekers of knowledge Chapter number one. So now we are starting the Hilya. We haven't started yet. This chapter talks about that ilm is ibadah. Ilm, seeking knowledge, is an act of worship. Since it is an act of worship, an ibadah will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless and until this ibadah is done purely for him and him only. So it requires ikhlas, sincerity. Ibadah without ikhlas will be rejected. So in order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want Allah to accept your ibadah, you have to fulfill the conditions of the prerequisite, which they are three prerequisites or conditions. Number one, iman, tawheed. Shirk, ibadah will not be accepted. Number two, sincerity, ikhlas. You do it for the sake of Allah. Number three, compliance with the Quran and Sunnah. It has to comply with the Kitab and Sunnah. If one of the three conditions not fulfilled, this ibadah will not be accepted. So the ikhlas is the main ingredient in seeking knowledge. Because it is ibadah. So you, a student, the student, student of knowledge, you help purify his heart or her heart, and seeks only Allah's pleasure. Allah's pleasure. Keep in mind the hadith. Man talab al-ilma li-yumari bihi li-yumari bihi al-ulama aw li-yumari bihi al-sufaha aw li-yasrif ilayhi wujuha al-nas fal-nar al-nar. This hadith is very scary. Whoever seeks knowledge to compete with the scholars so that 
I will compete with the ulama, so I will be argued. You jadil, you bari, you argue with the ulama. Oh, I have knowledge, I can argue with you. So if that is your intention, then the Prophet said, Anar Anar, which means this will lead to the hellfire. Or, do you marry his sufaha to argue with this knowledge, the fools? Or to attract people's attention, to capture their attention. So people, they look at you. So this is your intention. You are ruined from the beginning and destined to hell and not and not. So you have to, first of all, purify your heart, purify your niyyah. Because it is ibadah. Ibadah. Staying awake at night, reading the books, learning your deen, preparing for your class. This is ibadah. As a matter of fact, it is better than Qiyam al -Layl. It's better than the Tahajjud. The Salaf, the uh, are very clear about that. If there's pure intention, talab al-ilm afdal, it's more rewardable, has more reward than the, the, the prayer or qiyam al -Layl. Because the benefit is more. You benefit yourself and then you will benefit others, but providing that there is a class, there is pure intention and motive behind it. So it is ribada. So the author Rahimallah says, Aslul Usuli. Aslul Usuli fi hadihi al hilya. Bal wa li kulli amrin matloob. علمك بأن العلم عبادة بأن العلم عبادة قال بعض العلماء العلم صلاة السر وعبادة القلب وعليه فإن شرط العبادة إخلاص النية لله سبحانه وتعالى قوله وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين حنفاء وفي الحديث الفرد المشهور وفي الحديث الفرد المشهور عن أمير المؤمنين عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إنما الأعمال بنيات نعم The author رحمه الله he began this chapter by saying أصل الأصول the root of all the roots the principle of all the principles أصل الأصول في هذه الحية which is mentioned and contained in this book which you have before your hands بل ولكل أمر مطلوب this is the principle of all principles this is the most important thing 
that you should understand. It is essential and important for any required matter or required action. This is the principle of any action you want to do is the ikhlas. <clears throat> In understanding that knowledge is worship, an act of worship. You have to know that seeking knowledge well, any required action, any deed you do, you have to know that seeking knowledge is ibadah. لأن العلم عباده. قال بعض العلماء, some of the scholars, some of the salaf said, العلم صلاة السر. Al-ilm is salah. That's why right. the salaf, they prefer studying at night and revising and writing the hadith because it is salah, but secretive salah. Salah of as-sir. This is a prayer which is done secretly. No one sees you. You are between your books, totally engrossed. So this is Salat al-Sir, secretive prayer. وَعِبَادَةُ الْقَلْبِ This is the ibadah of the heart, because the ilm softens the heart. The ilm Builds up the taqwa. Innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al-ulama. Verily, those who fear Allah most among Allah's servants are the scholars. So the scholars, they fear Allah most. Because that is the fruit of the ilm. That the fruit of the ilm, it softens the heart. And they know Allah Azza wa Jal through the ilm. Whereas the ignorant, he doesn't know Allah. That's why his iman is weak. Because he doesn't know his creator. Where are the ulama? They see Allah's greatness. They see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they fear Allah most. Allah can find the, the, the khashia, the real fear to the scholars. So, Al-ilmu salat al-sir, it is a prayer, it is salah, security prayer. If there is sincere ikhlas, if there is sincere ikhlas, you feel this sweetness, this uh, delightfulness, this uh, rise in your spirituality, How it said, Sahari Itankih al Nasa'ili Aladduli or Habuli Min was Miraniatin Watuli Inaki. The ulama always they mention this when they talk about the importance of seeking the ilm. And the status of seeking ilm. So he says, Sahari, staying awake at night, 
when everyone is asleep and I'm awake okay to revise and scrutinize and study thoroughly the complex issues is more beloved to me. I enjoy that. More tasteful, more desirous. Is more enjoyable, tasteful, uh, desirous, delightful than having an affair with your beloved one and a long period of hugging. This is what he said. In Wasligania, Watuli and Api, long embracing and hugging. This is more tasteful, enjoyable than that. By staying awake, revising the books of knowledge. Ibn Hazm Rahimullah he mentioned. And by the way, I recommend that all of you download this book and read it. Al-Akhlaq wa Siyaf. Okay. The manners and ethics and the biographies. Bimudawat in nufus in puri, in curing and treating the nafs by Ibn Hazm. Also, I think it is there in English as well. So he said, I tried all, I mean, because his father was a minister. His father was a minister. And by the way, Ibn Hazm, he started seeking knowledge very late. He was a man, not at young age, very late. But he became an imam. So he said, I tried all the pleasures. I didn't find something more pleasurable than seeking the ilm. It's more than anything you can imagine. All the pleasures you can imagine, seeking ilm is more enjoyable than that. Satisfying, makes you feel happier, more happy, happier than anything else. Al-ilm, salat al-sir. The Qalb, the heart, my dear brothers and sisters, worships Allah. Every limb of your body worships Allah. Every single organ worships Allah. If you think an atom worships Allah, praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is ibadah for the qalb. There are certain acts of ibadah only can be can, can only be carried out by the heart or executed by the heart or implemented by the heart. These are the a'mal al qulub or the acts of the of the heart like ikhlas, that is amal al-qalb, an action of the heart, the ikhlas. 
Shidk, truthfulness, humbleness, humi humility, fear. So all these are acts of the Qalb, Ibadat al Qalb. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves these acts of the heart more than He likes and loves the heart of the limbs. So the heart, the, the actions of the heart are more beloved to Allah than the actions of our limbs. Because the actions that are carried out by our limbs, which are, that are visible, people see, they cannot be 100% pure. But the things that are in the heart and done in the heart, no one sees them. So they are done for the sake of Allah. So when you have this ikhlas, when you have this <coughs> down to earth humbleness, you are a humble person. Your heart is full of Allah's fear. All these are noble acts and Allah loves them. Ibadat al-qalb. So you, we need, my dear brothers and sisters, to focus on this ibadah of the qalb, the heart. And what? The, the, the fruit of all the knowledge is to purify this heart. If the knowledge didn't help you to purify your heart, then it's a harmful knowledge. It's not a beneficial one. It's not. So that's why the Prophet he used to say, Allahumma ni'udhu bika min ilm la yanfa, wa qalbin la yakhsha, wa ayin la tadma. So this is, the Prophet used to say that. Ilm la yanfa. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from a knowledge that doesn't avail me, doesn't bring me any benefit, doesn't benefit me. Always one has to focus on the beneficial knowledge, the knowledge that will help you, bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you should know the, the beneficial knowledge and you should not waste your time. So the knowledge that doesn't bring you Closer to Allah is harmful. Harmful. Layanta. In layanta. So the ilm has to soften, has to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help you to soften you. This heart, heart. In layanta. Kalb layakhya. Oh Allah, I seek your protection and refuge in you from having a heart that doesn't tremble of fear. Doesn't have this homage, for sure. I seek your protection from having such a heart. And an eye that never sheds tears. Dry eye. My dear brothers and sisters, each one of us should ask himself, when did you last, the last time you cry out of Allah's fear? You cried. Your eyes welled up. You were sitting by yourself, remembering Allah, making a stirfar, regretting for what you have done, and then your eyes start dwelling up. up. When? Hmm? That's why we need to keep asking and checking ourselves. Because you see, the eyes are linked to the heart. Linked to the heart. If the heart is hard, the eyes will not cry will remain dry. 
they will not well up with tears. For the heart is dry, is hard. Because Allah loves these, the eyes that shed tears. He loves them. He loves them. He loves seeing your tears huh? dropping and flowing in your cheeks. He loves that. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab had two marks here in his cheeks because of the constant weeping, crying, shedding of tears. So they made marks on his cheeks. Aynan, two eyes. As intermediate. عين بَتَ تحرس في سبيل الله وعين بكت في خشية الله. There are two eyes will not be touched by the fire. Of course, the eyes means the owner of the eyes. Okay. The owner of these two eyes. He will not be punished. He will not be cast into the fire. Ainan, let him assume now. So two eyes will not be touched by the fire. Ainun bata tahras is to be Allah. The eye that remains awake of the night, guarding in the cause of Allah, guarding the borders of the Muslims, the frontiers of the Muslims. Protecting them, remaining awake that all the night, watching, vigilant, supervising, overseeing. This is one eye. So, a person, the Mujahideen, they will not be touched by the fire because they are on the front lines defending. The frontiers and the borders of the Muslim land. That's one eye. The other eye, وَعَيْنٌ بَكَتْ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ An eye shed tears out of Allah's fear. Allah's fear. So when the heart is soft, the eyes and you know, among the seven who will be in the shade of the mighty throne on the day of resurrection, a man sitting alone by himself, then he remembers Allah. His eyes started to well up with tears. So the qalb, my dear brothers and sisters, the ibadah of the qalb is very, very important. <clears throat> and this qalb becomes hard. And we have to keep treating it. We have to keep safeguarding it, protecting it from the haram, because all these five senses we have, these the five senses Allah has given to each one of us, they are openings, windows to the outside world. And they are inputs. And all these inputs, they go to the heart and affect the heart. So if we watch haram, the haram goes and affects the heart. If we eat haram, the haram affects the heart. If we touch haram, the haram affects the heart. If we talk haram, that affects the heart. So all these five senses.
أن أن أبوت أبوت سيد على يقلبك خمس عند قسوته بدم عليها تفز بالخير والضفر خلاء بطن وقرآن تدبره خلاء بطن وقرآن تدبره كذا قيامك ينحى الليل أو صطه وأنت جالس أهل الخيل الخير والخبر So he is telling us, The the cure and the remedy for your heart when it is uh, hard, the remedy for that, There are five. Emptiness of a stomach. That means you eat little, because if you eat much, you will sleep much, you will lose much, you will miss doing khair a lot. So try to reduce your food. So try not to overeat or eat a lot, reduce the amount of food you take. Second cure, remedy, is the Quran, the Quran al-Tadabbaru. Quran, ponder upon it, reflect upon its ayat. وقرآن تدبره كذا قيامك جنح الليل أوسطه Another cure is to get up at night and pray the tahajjud tahajjud So the tahajjud is the cure for the hard heart وأن تخالط أهل الخير والضفري. Another cure is to be in the company of the righteous. The company of the righteous. Because if you are in the company of the righteous, when you are always in the company of the righteous, this will soften your heart because when you are surrounded by righteous people, you, they will always encourage you to do righteous deeds. So we need to keep checking this heart and the ibadah of this heart. Then he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Wa'alayhi, the condition in this case of worship is, Wa'alayhi, fa'inna shatwa al-ibadah ikhlas al-niyya. The condition of any ibadah is ikhlas al-niyya. Ikhlas al-niyya. Have pure intention. Have pure intention. So this is very important. Remember the three conditions. Iman, Ikhlas, and Mutaba. Three conditions. And here the people are different types. Different categories. Some people they have no ikhlas and no mutaba. They, they are not sincere and they what, what they do is not in line with the kitab and sunnah. This is one category. Some people, they have ikhlas, the first, no ikhlas, no mutaba. 
no compliance. Number two, a class without compliance. Number three, compliance, but not a class. Example for the first two type, those who have a class, they have neither sincerity, they are not doing things sincerely, nor that what they are doing is in line or comply to the revelation or sanctioned by the lawgiver. For example, he is doing shirk, because shirk cannot be approved of by Allah, and it's not, uh, does not comply with the revelation, is not in line with the wahi. And second thing, he's doing things, he's doing shirk and the polytheistic act, and second thing, he's not doing it sincerely though the, what he's doing is shirk but also there is no sincerity he is doing these things only for showing off for showing off for example you know that to slaughter an animal for other than allah is shirk so those who for example slaughter animals at the mausoleums or the tombs or i think they call it darga or whatever it's shirk haram, and that meat is uh, prohibited for us to eat. It is shirk. So he does this. He slaughters many, a lot of uh, many animals, many sheep. But he does this only for showing off, for showing off. So there is neither mutaba'a that means what he's doing is approved of by the by the shara by the lawgiver no there is sincerity that's first category second category there is sincerity but there's no mutaba he is sincere but what he is doing is not aligned with the Kitab and Sunnah, does not comply with Kitab and Sunnah. Example for this, the people who practice Bid'at. They have a class, sincerity. They do these things thinking that these are good deeds, these are righteous deeds to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, those who celebrate the Mawlid, they think this is Ibadah. Ibad. And you'll find them crying and, and they are sincere regarding their love for the Prophet. Yes, they love. They have this love for the Prophet and they are ready to die to defend him. Yes, yes. Though what they are doing is, is bid'ah, but they have love for the Prophet. Yes, it is not the correct, but they have this, this, they don't have the right concept of the love, which is the, to follow, tell them, if you love Allah, follow me, and Allah will love you. So they don't understand the true concept of love, but they have love. They have this emotional attachment to the Prophet, no doubt, no doubt. And that's why if you, when they go, for example, to Medina, you see them in front of the house of the Prophet out of love, they are crying, crying. So they have this attachment, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. And they have this emotions and passion. Though what they are doing is bid'ah, okay? That's why Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, perhaps they will, Allah will reward them. Not for their bid'ah, not will reward them for their love for the Prophet. 
So loving the Prophet and have this passion and this emotion and feeling and this affinity and uh, towards the Prophet and that is of course something required. Some people they claim okay following Kitab and Sunnah, but they have dry heart. Okay, that that passion is not there. They don't have it. So you should have this passion, this love for the Prophet. And it has to be according in line with the Wahi, with the Kitab and Sunnah. So this is second example. He has a class. He's sincere of what he is doing. But the second condition, no mutaba. What he's doing is not in accordance to the Kitab and Sunnah. Third category of the people. Okay. He has a mutaba, but no ikhlas. Apparently, mashallah, he's following kitab and sunnah, beard, short thobe. Hmm? This is bid'ah, this is this, the shirk. But no ikhlas. His heart is hollow, hollow, empty, empty. Though, apparently, the ex what he, what you see externally, but inside, no ikhlas. These actions of the heart are not there. The humility, humbleness, fear of Allah, love for Allah, love for his messenger, love for the Muslims, kindness. His heart is void of kindness, rahmah, mercy doesn't have these things. Yes, apparently he is, mashallah, abiding by kitab and sunnah. But where is the ikhlas? It's not there. It's not there. The fourth time, which is the best there is ikhlas and there is mutaba, both. This is the top. You are sincere and you are abiding by the kitab and sunnah, like the sahaba, and you follow their way. <coughs> so here the Sheikh Rahimahullah is saying, that the class, the niya, is very, very important. So Allah said, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلُصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ مُخْلُصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ And they were commanded, not, but, that they should worship Allah. وَمَا أُمِرُوا they are commanded not but to worship Allah. Allah. Mukhlusin al Adin. Mukhlusin al Adin. So silly. At the bottom of the heart. Mukhlusin al Adin. And worship none but Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. So the ikhlas, the ikhlas. 
And in the hadith, the Sheikh is saying, وفي الحديث الفرد المشهور الفرد المشهور You see, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is divided into two types. مقبول مردود Acceptable, unacceptable. Okay. So, two main categories. So, some narration can be accepted, some narrations cannot be accepted. So, the narrations that cannot be accepted are the, the weak hadith and the mawdu' fabricated spurious narrations, and the weak hadith are many types. Many types. The Sahih Hadith, which is the acceptable, which is also the traceable, the Musnad, are the Sahih and the Sahih li ghayrihi, Hasan, Hasan li ghayrihi. Hadith Sahih, that means all the conditions of the Authentic hadith are fulfilled. These conditions of the hadith that it are fulfilled, that the chain is continuous, all the narrators are reliable. Okay, so the sanad, the chain of narrators are all the rings are connected, all the narrators, each one met the one above him, his sheikh, and heard from him. At the Salih Sanad, the continuity of the Sanad, all of them are reliable. The Isnad is free from any defect. So that is called Hadith Sahih. If the Isnad is authentic, then the Hadith is Sahih only that he Sahih only that he if the one of the narrators there's a slight weakness in his memory then the grade will drop the authenticity will drop and the hadith will become hasan hasan now if there are two hadith they are hasan and all reported the same message and meaning of the hadith, these two Hassan hadith can support each other, strengthen each other, and make hadith sahihun l-ghayrihi, sahihun l-ghayrihi. If the hadith is weak, but the weakness is, is not that severe, and then we'll find another narration and the weakness not severe, then these two narrations support each other and the hadith will be upgraded and become hadith and hasan Now, among the different types of hadith is the hadith al-fard. Okay. Or hadith al-ahad. Hadith al-ahad. Which means as of no, uh, Al Bayquni said in his Bayquniya, "Wakul Gharibun ma rawa rawin fakat." Hadith Gharib or Fard. So the Hadith is called Gharib if it is reported by one narrator only. Though it is Sahih, but it is called Gharib or Fard. Like hadith of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. This hadith, بالنيات, no one of the Sahaba reported this hadith except Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. He is the one who reported this hadith. Then others, they heard it from him. Okay, that is the meaning of al hadith al fard al mashhur. Then it became famous. 
So the hadith, al gharib like this hadith. It is reported by one narrator like the Sayyidina, this Inna Mal Amal Ibn Niyat, reported by Sayyidina Umar Ibn Khattab. <coughs> So this is the, the meaning of Hadith Gharib, or Fard, which is related and reported by Sayyidina Umar, and he was the only one who heard it. Which means, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ Remember this. إِنَّمَا Kafa and makfufa. Remember this? Inna ma. Kafa and makfufa. Because inna and its sisters, inna wa akhawatuha, tansub al mubtada wa tarfa al khabar. If inna and then there is mubtada, subject, and then khabar, predicate. So the inna will make the mubtada mansub, will have fatha and the khabar. For example, inna al-rajula maridun. Without inna al-rajulu maridun. Al-rajulu mubtada maridun khabar. Subject predicate. Now I put inna. So inna now will have function. It will influence and change the sign of i'rab which means the end the the end of the of the letter the sign and the 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 way the the last of the word will be pronounced will be different without inna arrajulu there is dhamma maridun now i put inna so inna tansub al mubtada so what inna will do will make the mubtada the subject with the fatha, mansub, then it will become inna rajula maridun khabar predicate. The man is sick. Verily, the man is sick. Certainly, the man is sick. Now I put ma after inna. Inna ma. Oh, I cancelled it. Now it is not there anymore. It will not function. Though it is there, but it will not function. It will not function. Then I will say, Innama rajulu maridun. Like Muqtada and Khabar. Arrajulu maridun. Because ma stop the function of inna. Kafatha, kafatha. Prevented inna from functioning. So that's why when you see innama, they say kafatun and makfufa. Kafatun wa makfufa is inna which is cancelled and nullified by ma. So why do we use this? Oh, for balagha. There is this is a rhetorical device. When you see innama, it means it limits the meaning to feed al khusus al uh, yes yes to feed al khusus okay so when i say innama al a'malu bin niyat to feed al hasr to feed sorry to feed al hasr which means it limits the meaning and confines the meaning so the meaning now is limited to this. Inama al amalu The real deeds that will be accepted by Allah are those deeds that are judged by the intention. Allah will always see what is the intention behind behind the uh, that deed, that amal. إنما العمل بالنيات. 
So people will be rewarded according to their intention. Innama al-amalu bin-niyat. So when you see innama, wherever, it feeds al-hasr. It feeds al-hasr. Which means it denotes the, it means limitation and confining the meaning to this, whatever is mentioned after it. So when they said, innama al-amalu, you see al-amalu here? Marfu'a. Why? Because inna is cancelled, it's not functioning. Inna mar'amalu bin niyat. So the deeds will be judged according to one's intention. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, each one of us should always keep rectifying and purifying his niya or her niya intention. So that you will be rewarded. You can convert, my dear brothers and sisters, you can change all your a'mal into acts of worship, into ibadah. You are eating. You can, I can make it ibadah. When my intention is, oh Allah, I eat to gain the strength to worship you. I go to sleep. Oh Allah, I, go to, I sleep to gain strength to worship you. You go to work. Oh Allah, I work to earn halal. So I eat halal and feed my family halal. So all this, now, eight hours sleeping, you are getting hasanat. Malaika are writing for you. All the years in your lifetime, eating and drinking, you are getting hasanat, become ibadah. All the years you are working, become ibadah, because you are doing it for niyyah and seeking Allah's pleasure. So the niyyah will convert all your a'mal, all your acts into normal actions into acts of worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ikhlas, purify our niyat and purify our heart and strengthen our heart and fill our hearts with the iman. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the beneficial knowledge and righteous deeds and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our faults and ignorance and sins. Ameen. And may Allah keep us remain steadfast on this beautiful deen until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and find him pleased with all of us. Ameen. And may Allah reward all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, immensely for your patience and attendance. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakum Allahu khaira. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallahu khairan, Sheikh. Now I would request brothers and sisters, if they have any questions, kindly post the question, <coughs> questions in the chat box. Inshallah, Sheikh will answer the question. Uh, uh, there is a question, Sheikh. What is the difference between Bida'a and Muhdathat? Muhdathat is something new, invented. And bid'a also something new. So the muhdatha is bid'a. And the bid'a is muhdatha. Something ahdatha, you make something new. You invented something. Iyakumu muhdatha tul umur. The Prophet is saying, okay, so of course in the Arabic language, no two words that are synonymous. Some words, they have there is intersection if you, those who know math, if A and intersects with B. So there is a common area between the two words they share. That, so for example, Islam and Iman, okay? They intersect. That's why if they are mentioned together, Islam and Iman, so the Islam refers to the external actions and Iman to the internal one. But if one of them is mentioned, then it covers the other. So Islam mentioned by itself, it covers Iman, Muslim, Mu'min, no difference. Okay, if they are, if the word is mentioned by itself, for example, or you who believe. So Allah is addressing the believers. So 
So can someone say, no, Allah is talking to the believers, not to the Muslims? No. Believer is a Muslim, a Muslim is a believer. Because remember, they are, there is intersection. So the, when one is mentioned by itself, the, it covers the other. So the, the invented things of the muhdathat are so many. Not all the invented things are prohibited. No, the things that are invented in the deed are prohibited. But in things invented in dunya, they're not prohibited. That's why vidah means something inventive, something new. So is everything new haram? No. If it, it is haram, if you invent in the deed, the bid'ah in the deed. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, and avoid the invented matters. In the deed, of course, he's talking. So every muhdatha is, is a bid'ah, is an innovation. Any invented matter is an innovation in the deed. And every bid'ah is a misguidance or leads to misguidance. And every misguidance leads to the hellfire. So, so this is Amr al Muhdath means bid'ah or bid'ah. Because the word bid'ah actually, bada'a, if you go to the root, bada'a. It means to make something without a prior example, previous example. That, that's why Allah badi'a samawati wal ab Allah abda'a samawati wal ab Allah created the heavens and the earth without a prototype, prototype, without a previous example. Right? That is the the root and the meaning of the, the word bada'a. Bada so the bid'a is something invented in the deen without a previous example for it. Something new. Something new. Taken from the, the saying of the Arabs, the Arabs would say if a camel started to limp, limping, Okay, that's not walking okay. So the movement of the animal now is, is not balanced. So the Arabs, they would say, So the, the, the camel is not moving normally because this movement now and, uh, uh, of the camel is not like the previous one. So it is a new, and there is no previous example of such movement. So the two words can be used interchangeably. Muhdatha is bid'a, bid'a is muhdatha. I hope this is clear to the questioner. Next question, please. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. <coughs> the next question is from a sister. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Whenever I try to study, I end up being lazy. How to not come into the traps of shaitan? and learn and seek more knowledge. Of course, this is the shaitan. Okay, maybe the moment you open the book, you start feeling sleepy, yawning. If you start doing this, get up and take wudu. Okay, and come back and resist because this needs mujahada. You have to make jihad against your, your nafs because the shaitan wants to uh, stop you from pursuing and learning your deen because he knows when you learn your deen you will be far away from him and you will be qualified and you will be educated and you will not discover his tricks so it's better for him to keep you ignorant so the moment you start to feel lazy get yourself refreshed either uh, for example, you are studying, you start to uh, open the window, have fresh air, come out and come back. Wash your face, have something to drink. 
So this is jihad. Okay, so talab al-ilm is not easy. So it needs mujahada. And Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُ السُّبُولَانَا So if you strive for our cause, Allah will facilitate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up all the ways of khair for you. So you need to strive. Next question, please. Is there any other question, brothers and sisters? There is a question, Sheikh. Is nutmeg haram? N-U-T-M-E-G. Okay, this is... Uh, this issue is that they say that it intoxicates. Because it intoxicates. If you take a big quantity of it, it will intoxicate you. So because of this, because it, it intoxicates, if you take a big quantity, then it falls in the, the, the hadith, ma askara kathiruhu faqalilu haram. What the, the big quantity of it intoxicates, then a small quantity of it is haram. So the best thing is to avoid it, is to avoid it and not to put it in your drinks or your food, etc. Be on the safe side. And always doubtful matters, leave the doubtful matters, as the Prophet ﷺ said. Leave what you doubt to that which you don't doubt. Something you have doubt about it, stay away from it. Next question, please. The next question is, uh... A similar question. Uh, a sister wants to know that her husband is running a grocery store and they sell the grocery items. Sometimes, no, many a times, non Muslims come and purchase from it. And they, some, uh, they purchase some items which they use for their puja, for their worship. Sometimes they mention it, sometimes they don't mention it. So, should I sell those items which are commonly used, but sometimes it is used for puja? No, you don't ask them. You don't ask them. You sell. You don't ask. Someone, yeah, coming, buying it. You don't ask him what they are going to use it for. You don't ask. Just sell. Next question, please. That's it, Shane. Is there any other questions? Uh, brothers and sisters, kindly post it or we will end the session. No questions. Okay. Jazakallahu uh, khairan, Sheikh. We thank Allah subhanahu ta'ala for granting us opportunities to learn from Sheikh. And we ask Allah subhanahu ta'ala to grant uh, similar opportunities and may, uh, give us more opportunities to benefit from uh, the truths of Shuyuk. From uh, Subhanakallahumma bihamdika wa rashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa ratubu ilayh. Jazakallahu khairan.